shaka shaka boom boom shaka boom boom shaka shaka boom boom shaka Children, how wonderful it would be to have animals talking in real life. Well, Chetaka tales from our Indian fables and folk tales help us in this imagination process. What are Chetaka tales? Chetaka tales are very old in its origin. They are thought-provoking tales with high moral values. They are passed from generations to generations. These are stories written around 300 before Christ in Pali language and translated into various languages. The stories are supposed to have taken place in and around Banaras now called Varanasi. These stories are believed to be associated with the earlier birth or incarnation of Buddha the Great. Children, besides the interesting stories, the moral values Layered in the stories will be worth following. The King Crow and the Loyal General Long, long ago, there lived a King and Queen Crow in Varanasi. They were a very loving pair of crows. King Crow loved the Queen very dearly. The King Crow had a general. He was a very loyal general. One day, the couple were flying very near to the palace of the king of Varanasi. How good the fish fry smells! My dear, how I wish I could taste at least a small piece. Do not aspire for something which is beyond our reach. The next day, Come, my dear, let us go out for some food. Oh dear, I want the food we saw yesterday in the king's palace. If you really love me, get it for me. I will not eat anything else. The king crow was surprised and shocked at the queen's wish and wondered what he should do. Then his general crow came to him. What is the matter, your majesty? Queen wants the royal food from the palace for lunch. Nothing else. She saw the fish fry and other delicacies in the palace yesterday. Is that all? I will see our queen gets what she wants. The general took eight of his best and strongest crows along with him to the palace.
Let us perch on the kitchen roof. Listen carefully. When the food is being taken to the king, I will fly very close to the cook. I will see that he is scared and drops the tray with the food. Then your turn comes. Four of you fill your beaks with rice, the other four with fish. Fly as fast as you can to our king and queen and give them the food. Here comes the cook. When he reaches the open courtyard, I will scare him. The next moment, the gentle crow flew past very close to the head of the cook. The cook dropped the food. The eight crows were waiting for this. Four picked up the rice and the other four picked up fish and flew to their king and queen. Unfortunately, the gentle crow was caught by the cook and was brought to the king. Good, you caught one crow. Bring him here. Our queen has got her food. Her wish is satisfied. Let them do whatever they want to me. Oh crow, you were bold enough to enter the palace and spoil my food. You risked your life in the foolish attempt. Why? I have done it for my king. I am his general. He told me about his queen's desire to have the food from your palace. Our queen loves your food. I have kept my promise to my king. Your majesty can give any punishment to me. I am ready. This bird was willing to sacrifice his life for his king. Such loyalty I have not seen anywhere so far. He must be rewarded. You make him free. Not only that, every day a portion of a food to be given to the king and queen crows. The moral of the story is loyalty to one's job and to one's master is appreciated everywhere. The Saint and Four Disciples Long time ago, a great sage lived in a cave. He had four disciples, Chandra, Ramu, Balu, and Keshav. Dear students, I have taught you everything Shastras, Vedas and Upanishads. You are proficient in all. I will meet each one of you separately tomorrow to give my blessings. When the four students left, the sage thought, I know that I have almost taught everything to my students. The only thing I did not teach them was a sacred verse that would bring the dead back to life. I think that I should teach to one of my students this verse who is the cleverest of the lot. Now, who is the cleverest of my disciples? I think I should teach this verse to uh, Keshav. 
The next day, the sage called Kesha. Kesha, I am teaching a special sacred mantra that would bring the dead back to life. This knowledge should be used very carefully. Remember, this mantra should be used judiciously. So, be very careful. The sage taught Keshav the mantra. Dear students, I am sending you all to the forest for 60 days. Come back to me after you return. All the best. All the four started towards the forest. When they reached deep inside the forest, they decided to rest. So after having some food, they decided to have a nap. While the other three slept, Keshav thought, I know, I am the smartest of all. <laughs> Sage knew this. That was why he taught me the special mantra. I must show my talents to my friends. After some time, they all started walking again. On the way, they saw some carcass scattered. These are the bone pieces of some big animal, probably a tiger. I can join the bones correctly and let us see. Chandra joined the bones correctly. Yes, it was the skeleton of a big tiger. Chandra, you have displayed your talent. Now, myself and Balu can add flesh and blood to the skeleton. Soon, the body of a huge tiger was lying there. <laughs> I have seen all your talents. Now watch, see my talent. I can bring this tiger back to life. Don't do it! Are you mad? The tiger will kill us. Listen Keshav, this is dangerous. <laughs> You're all jealous of my talent. No matter, I am going to give life to this tiger. Keshav, before you do it, let us escape. Hey friends, <laughs> did you all see my talent? <laughs> before Keshav could turn back to his friends, the tiger pounced upon him and killed him. After the tiger left, Chandra, Ramu and Balu carried Keshav's body to the sage. I am sorry for Keshav. All of you used your skills for fun. It was all the more serious for Keshav. For he gave soul to the tiger, which was a thoughtless act. The sage chanted the mantra and Keshav sprang to life. There is a lesson for you to learn. The moral of the story is, knowledge alone will not make you wise and clever. You must know how, when and where to use your knowledge.
Hunter outwitted. Once upon a time, there lived a stag in a forest. One day, his sister came to see him with her son. Oh my sister, what brings you here? Brother, I want you to teach your nephew some tricks of our herd. Yes, my sister, I will teach him. Go home now and come back tomorrow. For two months, Stag gave training to his nephew. One day, while running and playing in the forest with his friends, the nephew Stag stepped into a trap and got his legs caught. Friends, help! I am caught in the trap. Help! Help my friends! Ooh, let us inform his mother. Your son is caught in the hunter's trap. We don't know how to save him. Oh dear, what shall I do now? Let me go to my brother. The sister of the stag hurried to her brother. My dear sister, do not worry. I have taught him the various tricks of our tribe. He is intelligent. I must now remember what uncle taught me about the tricks of our trade. Ha ha ha! Now I know. I must lie stiff and pretend to be dead. Aha! There is a stag in the trap. Good. It is a lucky day for me. Oh my god! The stag is dead. Let me open the trap. I will cut him up and take the flesh home. My wife will be pleased. The hunter opened the trap. The moment the trap was opened, the stag got up and ran as fast as he could. And reached home. Oh son, you're back? How could you escape? I am a good student and my uncle is a very good teacher. The moral of the story is, the purpose and value of education lies in its application in real life. The Lion and the Jackal Once upon a time, there was a foolish lion who ruled a forest. He liked flattery. Of all the animals in the forest, a cunning jackal wanted to take advantage of the lion's liking for flattery. One day, the jackal went to the lion. 
Good evening, O oh King of the Forest. <laughs> oh. What is the matter, Jacob? Nothing in particular, my lord. I want to see you very often. <laughs> you are my hero. So powerful, so majestic, with royal looks. I want to work with you and for you for the rest of my life. <laughs> but how can I fulfill my wish? Because I'm a poor animal. The lion was extremely happy with the jackal's flattery. Oh, jackal, I always like my admirers. You can come and stay with me. The jackal wanted exactly the same. He started roaming with the lion and lived on the leftovers of the lion's kill. Without doing any work, he was getting his food. He was making the lion very happy with his flattery. One day, the jackal saw some of the king's horses grazing on the outskirts of the forest. The jackal went to the lion and said, I have found an excellent food for you, O king. The king's horse is grazing nearby. Horse keepers are there with this horse. So the hunt will not be an easy one. But your majesty is strong. <laughs> I will make the difficult job an easy one. As you said, I am strong. They are royal horses. The king has the power to kill anybody who attacks his horses. I am also a king. I will take what I want. You come with me. The foolish lion with his inflated ego followed the jackal to the place where the horses were grazing. When the horse keepers saw the lion coming, they were scared and fled. The lion killed one of the horses. Meanwhile, the horse keepers informed the king about the lion. The king arranged the best archer in the kingdom to protect his horses. The next day, the archer went along with the horses and the horse keepers. Oh king, <laughs> more horses are there today. You can have food for many days. Mm. Yes, Jekyll, I am coming. The lion attacked the horses. Before the lion could think of jumping on the horses, the arrow pierced his throat. Oh! Help, Jekyll, help! The unfaithful jackal ran for his life, leaving the lion to his fate. The moral of the story is, never fall prey to flattery.
The Monkey's Heart Once there lived a monkey on the bank of a river There were many trees there and the monkey was enjoying the fruits What a beautiful day I must start the day with eating some good fruits A little down the river stream lived a crocodile and his wife on the other side of the river Dear did you notice that fat monkey on the other side of the river I would like to eat his heart I would love to get it for you but as you know he lives on the other side of the river not only that he lives on trees I know that you're smart enough to fool the monkey and bring him here I have an idea it may work my dear Hello monkey I am residing on the other side of the river Let us be friends. I find you're always eating the same fruits. Don't you get bored of eating the same food daily? On the other side of the river, there are some delicious fruits. You will just love them. How shall I get across? I do not know swimming. That is simple. Now that we have become friends, mm, I can carry you on my back to the other side. You can eat any amount of fruits. That is an excellent idea. The crocodile carried the monkey on his back and started swimming. When they reached the middle of the river, the crocodile was moving very fast. The monkey was very scared. Friend, are you going to drown me? Swim slowly. I'm scared. Do not be scared. I am not going to drown you. Rather, <laughs> I am going to take you to my house and <laughs> kill you. My wife just loves to eat monkey's heart. Me too. Mm, mm, mm. I must do some quick thinking if I want to stay alive. <laughs> you fool! Stop that laughing. We are nearing my house. My dear friend, you may kill me, but you will never get my heart. Why? 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 Tell me why? Why? Because we monkeys usually keep our hearts on the tree where we live. Is that so? How can he believe your word? Turn back and go near the tree where I live. My heart is on the top of the tree. Just go to the bank of the river. I will go to the tree and get my heart for you. I am doing this as a special case for you because you're my friend. As soon as the crocodile reached the bank of the river, the monkey jumped onto the shore and climbed up the tree. You fool. How could I keep my heart on the tree and be with you? My heart is very much safe with me. You can never touch it. <laughs> oh, I am a real fool. How can I convince my wife? <laughs> That is my worry now. The moral of the story is Quick wit and presence of mind will save you from any difficult situation. Page 
pigeon, the monkey, and the elephant. Once upon a time, in a forest, lived three close friends. A pigeon, a monkey, and an elephant. There was a huge banyan tree deep inside the forest. The pigeon lived in a nest on the tree. The monkey lived on the branches and the elephant under the tree. The pigeon and the monkey used to get on top of the elephant and roam around the forest. They used to eat together and play together. Thank you elephant for giving us such a nice ride. Thanks for the fruit. Thanks for the ride elephant. With friends like you two, I do not want to go anywhere. We are having good fun. Although they were good friends, there were times when they would quarrel. Listen, we are friends, no doubt. But sometimes, difference of opinion may come amongst us. True, but we should see that the arguments do not cross the limit. You are right. Hmm. Hmm. In that case, there must be somebody to solve a problem wisely. Let us select a leader among us. Who will be the leader? Let the oldest be the leader. How do you know who is the oldest? That can be done. Let each one recall from their memory how this banyan tree looked like when they first saw it. That is fine. I will tell first. This tree was just a small sapling when I first came here. The height was just up to my knee. When I first came here, this tree was a small plant. I used to hold the topmost branch and bend it. So small was it. Friends, I was born on a banyan tree in the forest nearby. When I learned to fly, I left my mother's nest and came here. I had brought some seeds of the banyan tree. This tree has come out of that seed brought by me. Oh pigeon, you are the oldest, no doubt. Yes, Pigeon, you are the oldest and you are the fittest to be our leader. Because of you, we have a shelter now and we are living happily. The moral of the story is Old is gold. Once upon a time, in a forest, near a lake, lived three friends, a tortoise, a woodpecker and an antelope. Friends, it is getting dark. I am going to the lake. Alright, I am also going to the tree. I am going to my place. Okay, we'll all meet here tomorrow. The next morning, a hunter came that way. Ha 
I find footprints of either deer or antelope. I will set a trap here. He will surely pass this way to drink water. Hmm, I can catch him then. He was satisfied with the trap that he had made. I will come back for the catch tomorrow. The next day, early in the morning, the antelope came to the lake to drink water. His legs got caught in the trap. Help! Help! The tortoise and the woodpecker heard their friend's cries. They rushed to the lake. They found their friend the antelope hanging upside down from the branch of a tree. Help me friends, I'm trapped. Friend, you have strong teeth. You bite the rope and cut it. Meanwhile, I will keep the hunter away. How will you do it? When the hunter comes out of his house, I will keep on packing him and delay him so that our friend Tortoise gets enough time to cut the rope and make it antelope free. The tortoise was as slow in his job as a tortoise could be. The hunter too heard the screams of the antelope and he rushed out from his house. As soon as he came out of his house, the woodpecker pecked him vigorously. Sho, ho, 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 ho. This woodpecker has become mad. I will stay in my house for some time. Ooh, ooh, sho, sho. Friends, please hurry up. The hunter may come any time. You better hurry. The hunter may be here any moment. I have managed to delay him for some time. Oh, oh, he is coming with a big stick. I have finished. Come on, friends, let's run. The woodpecker and the antelope ran away. The poor tortoise was, as usual, very slow. Aha, so you are the culprit. You freed my catch from the trap. I will teach you a lesson. I will take you home and eat you. The antelope and the woodpecker see the hunter putting the tortoise in the bag. The antelope thinks that now it was his turn to save his friend. Mm, if he sees me, he will chase me leaving the sack. Then my friend can escape. The antelope shows himself. Oh, there goes my antelope. I must catch it. I will leave the sack here. I will come and take it afterwards. The hunter drops the sack and runs after the antelope. The antelope runs fast. The hunter loses his way. He reaches a long distance away from the place where he had abandoned the sack with the tortoise. The antelope comes back to the spot. Don't worry friend, I'll get you out of the bag. We all will be safe. The antelope frees the tortoise and they lived happily ever after. The moral of this story is unity and mutual helping will help you become stronger and ward off any enemy attack. Hello children, hope you enjoyed watching the Jataka Tales. We welcome your feedback and request you to visit our website www.mozabirhomevideo.com and send in your comments on this film.
boom shaka shaka boom boom shaka boom boom shaka shaka boom boom shaka boom boom shaka shaka boom boom shaka boom boom shaka shaka boom boom shaka ja ja ga ja ja ga te ja ja ga ja ja ga te Oh